Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about something that I feel intimidates everybody, which is entertaining. Especially when, I mean, I'm in my 20s and I remember I, when I first started entertaining and hosting people and hosting parties, I didn't want to do the red plastic cup thing anymore, but I wasn't quite at like Martha Stewart levels of awesomeness. I was in this awkward in-between phase. And so I wanted to sort of figure out how do I do this well without it seeming too fussy or kind of bro -y and awful. So these are some of my basic tips for maintaining your sanity while being a host. And the first one is pretty basic. It's make a playlist or have music. You want to fill the dead space. You want to fill the background. It will feel awkward if there's no music. Play music, like pick a basic Spotify or you know Pandora, whatever. Just put on something that you enjoy and that you find to be relaxing and sets the tone. Number two is make it mostly BYOB or BYOW or BOY cocktail, whatever. But my point is, is that you are not a bartender. So you should not be in charge of bringing all of the alcohol for your party. I think a good rule of thumb is you should have enough on hand so that everybody gets at least one glass of something, but then encourage people if they ask, oh, is there anything I can bring? Say, yes, like please bring a bottle of wine. That'd be so helpful. Thank you very much. Number three, I think is one of the most important ones, which is when someone offers help, accept it. I feel like for some reason, maybe it's also a girl thing. I don't know exactly what it is, but when someone says, oh, can I help you with anything? There's this sort of need to go, oh, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm great, don't worry about it. Take advantage of that, say, oh my gosh, yes, thank you. I would love it if you could help me make cocktails while I'm busy hosting and getting food on the table. Whatever it is, just when they offer help, accept it because you might not know it at that moment, but you do need help. So then that brings us to number four, which is invite someone early. I don't know if you've had this experience, but I've had that where it's like 15 minutes before the party's supposed to start and there's a ding dong at the door and I open it and it's someone's random plus one who I don't know really. And I'm kind of still like, my dress isn't fully zipped up. I need to put some more makeup on. And it's like, oh, hello person. Oh, like, okay, here's a glass of wine. I don't know what to do with you. So invite a friend over early to be kind of like your buddy and also to kind of seed the party, if that makes sense. Because there is always that awkward moment where people first start coming and they come in waves. And so if it's just you and one other person, it's kind of like, not really a party yet. But if you already have a friend there, other person comes, there's three people, it's a, rich, it's a party. So have your friend come early. And plus that's great to have someone there to help you out and kind of get you organized. And it's really fun to put makeup on together. So number five is set a definitive start and end time. This sounds kind of probably a little bit fuddy-duddy, but I think this is very important because when you set a time and say, like for instance, let's say you're having a party that starts at nine and you say party starts at nine. If you don't say the party is from nine to 12 or nine to 11 or whatever, um, what happens is that people will think, okay, it's open-ended, so maybe it's nine to two or nine to one, and then they'll come at 10.30. Whereas if you say it's nine to 11 or nine to 12, they know, okay, so I probably should come closer to the actual start time versus coming sometime in the middle. Number six is a tip from Clueless, which is to have flattering light. You do not want to stumble into some unflattering light and have your friend really mad at you because she missed out an opportunity with her crush because of really scary, like, you know, scary story around a campfire lighting. So you want to make sure that the lighting's really nice, which means dim it, make it kind of dark, light some candles, make it pretty, make it fun. I mean, granted, like if it's a game night and you guys are playing board games, maybe like lighting candles would be kind of confusing, but Regardless, keep the lights a little bit dimmer than usual. You don't want it to be shockingly bright. Seven is one of the most important tips. It is keep it simple. I do not understand this, but I swear every person I know does this, which is I'm gonna have a dinner party. You know what? I think I'm gonna try that brand new recipe I saw on Pinterest that looks kind of complicated and very impressive and I've never done it before. This will go great. Like that just, it will never go great. That is the, it's Murphy's Law. If it's a party and it's the first time you've done this recipe, you are going to burn it, you're going to end up throwing it in the trash, you're gonna cry, and then you're gonna order pizza and you're gonna feel like a failure. I've done that. Here's my rule. This is just, this is what I do. For every one dish that I serve hot, 
anything that's like hot and I have to kind of prepare it that last minute, I have three dishes that are make ahead or really easy to assemble. So I have a salad, I have a dessert I've already done, I have a cheese board, I have a side that just needs to be reheated quickly. I keep it really simple. And for dinner parties, I never do a brand new recipe. I just don't do it. Because here's the thing, you don't want to be stressed out. If you're gonna host people, you need to have a good time. If you are stressed out and like running around like a chicken with their head cut off, people are gonna feel that energy. That is not a good energy for a party. You need to be having fun. Number eight will also make me sound like a kindergarten teacher, but organize an activity. And all that means is you don't have to place charades. I'm not saying that but have an anchor to the evening. So it could be, you know, everyone's coming over to watch like your favorite TV show, or, you know, it's someone's birthday, or you guys are gonna play poker, or you wanna play Settlers of Catan, or whatever. It could be anything, but just have something to kind of hold the evening together, have it be for a reason. So it just means that everyone's gonna be there with a little more purpose and intention, and I feel like it kind of helps the energy if everyone knows kind of what's going on. A really easy one, if you're not sure what to do is to make it a wine tasting or a beer tasting or like a whiskey tasting and just have everyone come and bring a different bottle and you can just taste things and drink it and have fun and sort of play around with it. Or potluck is another good example. Everyone just brings something fun and that kind of can become the focus of the evening. Number nine is also a basic one, but be polite. I feel like um, when, especially when you're young and you're just learning how to host for the first time, there's this weird need to make it low key or make it very casual, which I understand because there's this misperception that if it's casual, it's somehow less work. That's not true, actually. It can be just as much work to throw something really fancy as it is to throw something very casual. It just has to do with sort of how you choose going about it. So for instance, this is an example of where I would say it's not polite. If you invite people over at seven o'clock, but then you don't have any food for them to eat. If you are not interested in cooking, that's fine. Have a later party or don't throw a party at your house. Maybe you have a dinner at a restaurant and then you come over for drinks afterwards or do drinks beforehand. Or if you don't really wanna deal with the food, you focus on maybe the dessert or a cheese board or you know doing cocktails and you have your friends bring stuff. Just find a way that it makes everybody have a nice time. And as a host, you're inviting people into your home. That's an inescapable fact. So that means you need to be gracious to them. You need to think about their needs. You need to think about how they can be made most comfortable. Number 10 is communicate, which means if you're a person, for instance, who has a shoes off policy in their home, which is fine, I am not that person, but if you are that person, sure, no, don't worry about it. That just means though that in your invitation or in the email, just do a little note at the bottom, PS, like I, you know, we don't wear shoes in the house, so just come in something easy that you don't mind taking off. So just if there's anything like that or something, for instance, like we do have a small child, so we're gonna be keeping it a little early or, oh, by the way, I have a dog, just remember not to, you know, he's nervous around a lot of people, so we're gonna be keeping him in the guest bedroom. Whatever it is, just communicate it. This can be done by writing a note and taking it on a door, like, um, you know, private, please do not go in here. Whatever it is, just you need to put it out there because people aren't mind readers. They're not gonna be able to guess that information. You need to tell them so that they know how to react to it. So yeah, these are some of my tips for hosting a party. And just remember, have fun. It's about not stressing out. It's about connecting with friends and talking and having a fabulous time. So really, all you need to do is plan ahead and make sure that all the elements are in place for you to have a good time. So think about what stresses you out and try to think about the best way to get rid of those things. Anyway, those are my tips and tricks for hosting a party. I hope you found them helpful. And if you have any other questions or comments, please place them below. I love getting comments from you guys. And yeah, if you have any questions about hosting parties, happy to answer them. Uh, anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. Have fun, bye.